Welcome to Art That Plays and Praise. My name is Ginger. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'll be talking about Kohinoor Extra Soft Pastels, and this is a painting I'll put together to demo this product. I just made a Kohinoor product review prior to this video. I, I don't know, but something about this brand had me hooked. Uh, so it's like a love at first sight. <laughs> so after giving their colored pencils a try, I'm excited to test out these extra soft pastels made in Czech Republic. It says in the box, Toison d'or. I'm not sure if I said that right, but it sounds French to me. The packaging is nothing to, to write home about. It's just a mediocre cardboard box with a flimsy sleeve which shows a micro-sized color chart on the back that you kind of need a magnifying glass to properly view. The inside though is functional with a foam organizer, which I think is essential. Each pastel stick has its own cubby hole, so that's cool. Soft pastels are sticks of pure color. They are chalky and tend to transfer pigments easily on your fingers, so be prepared to get messy when you're working with them. But I found that Koinor produces a bit less fragments compared to other cheap pastel brands. In fact, I find uh, it's even less dusty compared to Mangyo. Each pastel is covered with a plastic label with markings to indicate where you can start peeling them off. But uh, I found that it's not easy to lift these sleeves even when I have long nails. The labels are so stuck on the pastel sticks that you can't push and slide them out either. But once you grab hold of a tiny piece of the plastic, you can peel away quickly because there are perforations that go around the circumference of the pastel that allow you to make a clean cut. This may sound tedious, but the good news is after peeling away 50 labels, you'll get the hang of it and, it, and the step becomes easier. But the bad news is there are only 48 labels to remove in this set. <laughs> I did get a few casualties while peeling off the labels. No matter how gentle I handled the pastels, some pieces still broke off and crumbled to bits. But that's just the nature of soft pastels. They have clay and chalk as a binder, so they are fragile. Accidents like these are common, but even if the pastel sticks are cut up into smaller lengths, that's perfectly all right. Because you, you can paint a larger surface area by scrubbing along the broad side of the pastels rather than using the tip. In, um, some artists purposely break their pastels for this purpose. In fact, the only time you'll ever see these pastels as clean as this is when you first open a new set. After that, your paint set will just get messier and messier. Now I'll demonstrate how to use these pastels. Uh, I'll use a 360 GSM pastel matte paper, which is one of the best brands of paper, pastel paper in the market today. The pastel matte surface feels velvety smooth. It isn't as grainy or honeycomb textured as the Canson Métant pastel paper I used before. And yet, pastel matte grabs pigments amazingly well which was a surprise to me. Each page in the pad has a protective sheet in between, and I find that such a thoughtful feature. By the way, in case you're wondering, what's the difference between oil pastels and soft pastels? They're not the same. Oil pastels have a greasy feel because just as the name implies, they contain oils and wax as binding agents. They feel more like Crayolas. They're really like greasy. On the other hand, the pigments of soft pastels uh, are bound together by clay and chalk, like what I mentioned a while ago. That's why they're easier to use for a drawing compared to oil pastels. Illustrating with soft pastels actually brings back fond memories of my childhood when when my school teachers asked me before to decorate our blackboard using chalk, because that's exactly how these pastels feel like. It's like doodling with chalk. It's not rocket science to paint with them. 
Anyone can draw and paint with it. You, you can also scrub or I mean rub with your fingers to smoothen out the pigments and blend. The flat tips of the chalk pastels may be inconvenient for some of you who are used to uh, the tapered leads of pencils. But soft pastels are particularly useful for making broad strokes or for covering large areas such as when you're making an underpainting. But if you're working with finer details and you require precision, you may want to use pastel pencils instead. Or you can use hard pastels which are less crumbly and they come in longer, narrower sticks that are easier to hold and control. Um, there's a trade-off between color intensity and the fragility of a pastel stick. Pastels that have a lot more gum content, they don't, uh, they don't fragment easily, but they tend to be less vibrant in colors. With this type of pastels, colors look pale and muted, although they don't break easily. Since there are less pigments in every stick, these pastels are obviously cheaper in price. The more expensive pastels, on the other hand, are basically pure pigments. They are bold and intense in hue because they have very little gum binders. That's why they crumble even when you apply very little pressure. Now with Kohenur, it feels like they've achieved just the right balance between pastel stick strength and color saturation. Kohenur's extra soft pastels have very intense colors, as you can see here. Yet, they don't dust up so badly that, uh, to the point that it's inconvenient to use. The color selection in this 48-piece set is sufficient. There are enough skin tones for portrait paintings and enough of the blues and greens as well for landscape art. Since Kohenur is easy to layer and blend, there are tons more color possibilities actually. So you're not just limited to the 48 pigments in the box.
right at this point, the painting is considered finished. I, I've layered the final touches and my Koinur pastels will never be the same clean set again. But something unexpected happened. I used a spray fixative which caused a massive color shift in my art. I was so devastated because the chalky, almost velvety look of the piece changed to a deeper, bolder tone, which I didn't like. My initial reaction was to throw the painting, but after I've calmed down, I decided to salvage it with colored pencils. I was so disillusioned and lazy to pull out my pastel pencil, so I just grabbed what was already on my desk, which turned out to be my Prismacolor colored pencils. So I colored away. I went back in and just scrubbed layer upon layer on of colored pencils. Initially, I just wanted to clean up the edges and color in the small spaces and add fine details in places where the soft pastels, the soft pastels couldn't reach. It, it was just like a fine tuning step to salvage what I thought was an ugly result of the fixative. But as I went on with the process, I realized that adding colored pencils of, on top of soft pastels produced pretty good results. I'll be honest with you, I didn't know you could put waxy prism color on top of Koinur. Well, well, technically, it's on top of a fixative with Koinur underneath. In any case, th this was an experiment born out of an accident. And with me feeling really dejected, I was ready to throw away this painting anyway. So I didn't really care if prism color would work or not. But what a surprise this turned out to be. In the end, I'm so glad I didn't give up on the painting. At least the fixative disaster led to a compatible pairing between Koinur and Prismacolor. So I can put that bit of info as a note to self, which might come in handy in my next uh, mixed media project. Okay, friends, that's it for this episode of Art That Plays and Praise. If you haven't done so already, I'd appreciate it if you can subscribe to this channel so we can have more art adventures together. Alright, goodbye for now. Catch you again soon.